All right, we're excited to be joined now by Central Methodist head coach Jeff Sherman, who's been on the hub 35 years, knows some basketball, has built some phenomenal teams, and is in the midst of a really nice run right now. And of course, the news broke last week and that he has added by way of Clark County and John Wood, Chandler Bevins. Um, obviously, we thought he was a pretty big prize. Uh, and and maybe maybe one of those guys slipped under a lot of radar based on what he did. What's he to you, Jeff, and kind of how does he fit your ecosystem basketball-wise? Well, as we headed into this uh, recruiting season, we first of all, it's, it's, a, it's a big one for us. We, we felt we need to bring in four starters, um, some influential players. Uh, so Chandler was on our list early and I think it's for a number of reasons he's he's local the success he had at Clark County uh, you know it's still being talked about uh, but um, a couple of my assistant coaches one was Jay Jones yeah. who actually uh, of course he played for me from Hannibal and uh, Jay actually coached at Clark County a year got to know Chandler very well so we're hearing about Chandler a lot um, Obviously, the, the success that one has at John Wood, uh, Coach Hoyt is amazing. And I would love recruiting all his players. In fact, of, oftentimes we're always trying and we miss out. But uh, Chandler had a lot of schools on him. I mean, it was one of those things. We didn't know really where we stood, though uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, we actually had him on campus before all this COVID-19 shut everything down. It wasn't ideal. I think it was only a couple of days before we had to close campus. I think that's an advantage because we have a beautiful campus here. And for those that get the opportunity to come visit, I think that's a big deal. But he got to know us a little bit more, got to see the campus. But it was a, that was a long time ago. And, and we gave him space like we tried to do all our recruits. He had a lot of people on him, uh, good D2 schools, a lot of NEIs, but um, we really felt that we, I think, uh, expressed how much we wanted him <laughs> and how important he was going to be to our program. He could do so many things. Uh, you know, I, I think from a coaching standpoint, the opportunities that we're going to have with our program to mix things up so much he can score inside. I actually think, and I'm going to challenge him to be a little bit more outside uh, the next couple of years, and I think he can do it. Uh, he may not have had to be that much uh, there at John Wood, but because uh, we do like to space the floor, we run a lot of sets, we push the ball up and down, but his ability to score, defend, but I just think he's a great teammate. Now, when you can have one of your best players, also be a great teammate that just trickles down to everything else and that doesn't always happen you know I always have a lot of my role players everyone will always say when they're a great teammate but yeah you have to have talent well it takes more than talent to win we've had a lot of talent a lot of our years but boyfriend he's just a complete package he he supports his teammates he loves his teammates he respects and admires coaches he he has a passion to play and he's a good student I just don't think we could have gotten a better situation than having Chandler join us for the next couple of years. You guys have been great at like building identity basketball, finding guys that fit who you are and plugging them into your system. You, know, you almost have to do that at your level to be as successful as you have. It's how much is identifying the right, not the right talent, but the right guy critical to the success you had? Well, I think – you know, most all coaches obviously will say it's very important. It doesn't always happen. Easier said than done. Yeah. So I think there's times we think we did that, and then as the year goes along, we sit there and go, well, why isn't it working uh, like we had thought it was going to be? And uh, But uh, I think, again, knowing about him as long as we have and the success that he had, not just individual success, you know, what was he, a three-time All-State player in high school? Yes. That doesn't that, – that's that says a lot. But the team success, how the growth, the how he grew it in two years at John Wood. He had a good freshman year uh, on a team, and they play, they play a good schedule. The thing I like about John Wood is 
you can't look at their record. Man, he's not afraid to go out and play the best teams in the country. And he challenges their players to be better. That's We like to do that, too. You know, we And everyone looks at your overall record and say, well, you know, yeah, any, any coach can schedule wins. Uh, but the whole idea is the goal that we have as a coaching staff, uh, you know, my recruiting coordinator, associate head coach, Matt Sherman, that's my son. Right. Uh, he fell in love with Chandler. And the thing is, the goal that we would have is how can we help them reach their full potential? How good is Chandler going to be? And we watched how much he grew in just one year at John Wood. You know, he doubled, almost doubled his numbers and his production and the team uh, aspect. And, and so, yeah, he's going to be new for us this next year. But I think he's going to work hard during this preseason, postseason process to learn everything he can about our culture so he can come in running right off the bat and be one of our leaders as if he's been here. And, uh, but but to, to, to attract and identify the kind of players that, you know, you just want, not that you end up with, the ones you want and then you can get. And when we got the word that Chandler was going to decide to come here, you know, I, I told him this was going to be one of the best weekends of the summer. You know, and it wasn't I, – I can't remember what was going on. It, I, there was a lot of fun things going on, but it was fun. <laughs> From then on that weekend, it was fun. <laughs> so that's what I think it's going to be. He's going to generate that other type of enthusiasm. We have somewhat of a motto here we like is the relentless pursuit of greatness. And that could be a lot of different things to people and a program. But I think the passion is what we love to have, and we want that in our players. And he just has that passion, I think, not only to make himself better, but his teammates better. And ultimately, your team's just going to be better because of that. Last one for you while I got you here, kind of a curveball question, but you mentioned Coach Jones, and, and Jay has been such a big part over here of, you know, Hannibal and Hannibal LaGrange and all the things he's done. Just what's he kind of to your program, and, and what's his future look like based on the fact you've had him the last two years as well in a different capacity? Well, I, I like, in fact, we have a graduate assistant position open now because he's graduating, and he's now in the process of looking for a, a hopefully a full-time you know, college position. What a horrible time for that to happen. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, with this. But I love having my former players come back. And now all of a sudden they're in a different role. But, you know, I don't know if Jay was in a different role. He only got a chance to play for me one year. He came in as a senior. And he came in after he grew a whole bunch from his freshman year in high school. He was a little runt. He used to, I joke to him all the time. But he came in a senior year. We did not know where he would fit in. He not only came in and got to be our team captain, he was team leader. He became second team all-conference player. Uh, he had an amazing one year for us. And then to bring him back in over these past two years, he ran our varsity reserve program. He knew what it was about. He loves this place. Um, the passion that he had that translated – uh, from on, on the court to the players, his help. You know, I, a lot of people didn't know this. This year we were just hit with all kinds of situations. It was not a good year for us, record-wise. Uh, lost my two best players with discipline issues first semester, so we go into Christmas like 3-11. and I uh, had four players out for the year with injuries and surgeries. We At the end of the year, we started we started actually playing – about as well as anybody. We beat the, some of the top team. We didn't beat William Penn, but we beat all the other top teams in our conference. We just missed the playoffs. We only had about eight healthy players. Uh, had one player uh, that was not a guard. So our starting center, 6'11", everybody else was guards. Well, to get through practice, we had to have Jay practice. And our practice is picked up because you have an all-conference player that still wants to play, still has a passion of, of playing. So another grad assistant I had was Carl Martin. Carl played at Graceland University. He was all conference. So I had to have both my graduate assistants practice with us the last month of the season, which made us better. Um, you know, you hate to uh, have that situation, but we were fortunate enough to have Jay for that reason too. So he helped us in a lot of things. But again, I think the thing now that when when he, again, 
tomorrow would have been a day that he would have been graduate with his master's degree. And I, oh, I missed that opportunity for him. What, what a proud moment it is, not just for him, but family and our whole program. But at the same time, he's going to leave a mark that's going to last the next couple of years, and that's the ability to help get Chandler here. I mean, I'm sure he had a lot of good things to say about our university that Chandler listened to. Uh, you know, he knew and trusted him. But, uh, you know, I, I love having former players come back and share their experiences with the, uh, you know, the newer players. And, and Jay did a wonderful job for us.